Hey everyone, and welcome to the Indie Heads Podcast. I'm your host, Maddie, a.k.a. Recon AG. On this week's podcast, we have... Will, user Will for Thrill. Hi, and I'm Walliam, a.k.a. Dingus. Walliam? I'm sorry. Yeah, Is that, Wally- like, Wally- my name, like you, like a William. William. Yeah, yeah it's. I don't know where that meme even started from. Like someone just spelled my name one time. And now you guys it was me. because um you you um I don't know you you hit some celebrity up on Twitter and no, Megan like, Trainer. Like, no, no, that's different. That's different. And, yeah, and, and, and called you William. William. <laughs> no, no, no. This is also <laughs> how she Wait, called you I... William, and then I called you William in the chat, and I've been doing it ever since. That was a uh, Megan uh, Megan Garvey from. Pixar. Oh, oh yeah, Garvey okay. I mean, she's sister. not really a celebrity, but you know, she's like a. She, a she's, she's Pitchfork's trap queen. Internet person. Yeah, she's their her meme, their meme rap uh, correspondent. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, but yeah, this is our first podcast in like two weeks. Uh, we've we've just been like late. We've been bu- busy, I guess. None of busy. us have been not <laughs> busy. None of us have basically been on like the same page to do a podcast. I'm not gonna, yeah. you know, I'm not gonna shame any members of the podcast, but you know, some of y'all gotta step it up. You know, you know who you are. You gotta step it up. Um, but yeah, first podcast in two weeks. Hopefully, we get back to a weekly schedule after this. I think we have like a bunch of podcasts coming up. We have a podcast with Tyler from But I'll Be Please. Uh, we have Matt from uh, Elvis to Presley is going to be coming on soon. Um, we have Cascading Elephants. That interview has been in the works for months. We've been trying to get dates, but we finally have one hopefully set uh, in a little bit. Uh, but we yeah. Have future Hendrix we... coming on soon. Did we ever get a response from Moon, Moon, Moon? I haven't checked the. Uh, I... Well. I don't think so. Uh, rip. But yeah, after, after we get done with these uh, scheduled interviews, uh, we're definitely... I want to talk about the War on Women thing, because I think that's something we need to discuss with some of our viewers. I just want to get out of the way, because that was some, somewhat of a controversial episode, I think. I if, never listened to it, but... Yeah, but yeah, there was a comment in there... From the outside, it seems kind of like a train wreck. <laughs> yeah. There was a... Com- I, think the, I think the interview went well, but there was a comment by someone... If you go on the thread, you can find out who said it. it it's It's long basically kind of going in on uh, our guest Shauna and um I will say that I think it's definitely something we definitely need to fix because uh I don't want to throw Ethan under the bus because Ethan has done a lot for this podcast he's brought on a lot of guests I have to thank him so much for all the work he's done for this podcast but definitely there's been we've been bringing on guests that definitely we get too into politics about stuff and we don't talk about music and I think that's something that we did it with Jamie Kilstein we did it with uh Shauna and it's like okay yeah. if we're gonna bring guests on we need to discuss music so Hopefully yeah, what we're playing I, on... Oh, you want to say something, Alex? I mean, yeah, I, I agree, even though I kind of had a blast with Jamie Kilstein. Like, oh, I, I'm not saying it was bad, but I'm yeah. just saying that, like, we're a music podcast, we should mainly focus yeah, on that. No, yeah, no, absolutely. Like... No, um, the, the views of our guests aren't the views of the Indie Heads podcast. Yes, exactly. Thank you, Will. <laughs> uh, but, but yes, um, we're hopefully, if we do bring on guests, uh, what I want to do instead of, like, just having, like, standard interviews and whatnot, I would love to just bring on guests and just, just like... Basically, have him on as a guest of the podcast. Talk about music with us. Yeah. Have a main topic that co- sort of relates to the guests, you know. Uh, like I did it with John that one time when he came on for the Beach House. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, or, we'll, or, like, or Spectrum we're, Pulse. We're, we're or we brought on Spectrum Pulse. Pulse. Yeah. yeah. It would also kind of set a precedence for, I don't know. It'd be an interesting way to do, not even an interview, you know, because it wouldn't be an interview. But, like, I don't know. I don't feel like I've ever heard of anyone doing that. Like... Because I, I, if I want to bring Aris on, I want to bring Aris on to discuss music, whether it be their own or just yeah. a sort of set topic. Because I yeah. think doing interviews is kind of boring uh, for this podcast. I think, you know, our again, the episodes where we do interviews are not as popular. Well, eh. At least on, if I'm just saying on the subreddit, usually the, the, the times we don't do interviews are more popular than our normal ones. Did you guys hear that? Okay. Uh, but yeah, that's about. Uh, hopefully, after this, we'll hopefully slow down on all the guests we bring on because we just have to get our scheduled ones out of the way, and then hopefully we'll get back to a normal podcast. And yeah, let's get to. And anyway, speaking of a normal podcast, let's get to our first segment. <laughs> what have you been listening to? Um, we all have one album down because I think we've all been like. I think this week with the. With, by the way, our main topic tonight is going to be David Bowie's Black Star. Just get that out of the way. We've all been listening to a ton of Bowie this week, probably. Just, you know, because he recently passed away, and it's just like... Will you stay in our lover's story? We gotta, you know, it's like... It just, you have to... It's like, it's like the, any, listening to anything else feels, like, kind of inappropriate. However, I, mean, I, I don't want to go that far. That, yeah, not, not inappropriate. I've listened it, to it, some it, other things. It's just I've listened like, to, um... 
listen to Fear Fun, which was a blast to listen to Flea Foxes, which is great. St. Vincent, you know. I listened to uh, Future Hendrix, uh, The Purple Rain. Mixtape. Uh, I, I need to listen to that still. I have it downloaded, but, you know, I listened to some of it. And it wasn't like, it wasn't hitting as hard as, like, DS2 or 56 Nights to me. On those, on like the first, I I barely gotten through it. So, but it was like, oh, this, eh, maybe it's the sound quality. I don't know. See, that, that's why that's why I told you. Like when I, I was like, Maddie, have you listened to it yet? I need you to tell me why it's bad. Oh yeah, so, so I, thank, and, thank, and I, I like future. I liked again. I even liked. Everyone was hating on when it's time to be alive, and I thought that was a pretty decent project for what it was. Jumpman it was is so decent. good. Jumpman, big rings, diamonds the dancing. Big rings is my song. Oh, I hate freestyle. big rings. Diamond dancing. The, the first song. Digital dance. You, you guys yeah. know I kind of stand Digital Drake, 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 but that hook is terrible. Wait, what oh hook? Oh my god. Uh, for big rings, I hate big rings. Dude, I that's like my, it. That's, like favorite, dude, that's my favorite part of the album. The, I got some really big rings and I got some really big teeth. Okay. Anyways, let's. Diamonds get to, dancing. Coming with no so, strings. Diamond, diamond, so diamond, diamond, diamond. Swagger to it. I don't. It feels weird saying that word like. It, it's you know. the most Drake S song that isn't thirty for thirty freestyle, which is kind of I, I kind of wish the project d- 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 before I get to what I listened to this week. I was <sighs> like I liked it, but I definitely kind of wish they. It was definitely a future project that was just featuring Drake, and that yeah, was had, a, had a lot of Drake though. It was, no, it was, well, no, it was, was no, it was just the beats were very the beats were like for future pretty well, much, and Drake just hopped on them. And that was disappointing. It was like I kind of wanted more Drake influence thrown in there in the production. We didn't quite get it. But anyways, let's get to what I listened to this week. Um, Arthur Russell, calling out of context. Uh, Alex just has cat. Um, Sorry. <laughs> anyways, uh, calling out of context, uh, this is a really fun like synth pop album, pretty much. Um, Arthur Russell, I think uh, Rennie has talked about this guy on the podcast before. He was a, a New York artist. He was gay, uh, died of AIDS in 1992, produced. Uh, he had a couple disco, like underground disco hits. Um, he only made like one album when he was alive, but he had tons of like unreleased stuff. He just had laying around and, um, uh, some label was just basically put, just like slowly putting out some of the stuff, you know, he had left over after his death and calling off context is one of those albums. And it's like this really fantastic, like uh synth pop album. Um, it's got, it's sort of got these sort of like long, uh, long jams and some of them were short. Like, I think my favorite song in there is, uh, you and me both it's just this fantastic song and uh yeah um, i don't have much to say other than yeah, definitely listen to this album um if you're interested in synth pop if you're interested in, like just 80s music in general it's sort of like it's basically sort of like a precursor it's, it's art pop pretty much so if you're interested in that so it's basically like emotion part one uh not quite Cause that, that's my uh, metric now for synth pop. It, it, it's definitely like it's it's art the standard pop. Yeah, it's art pop, but it's like it's got some experimentalness. Like it, it, his vocals are very sort of like um, they're not as they're not entirely clear. Like you can't always like hear what he's saying, but it's still like a really fantastic album. That's definitely worth checking out. So uh, you want to talk about what you listen to, Will? Because I don't have much to say. Uh, sure, I can give it a give it a whirl. All right, so yeah, I, I, I've just, just like obviously I've been listening to a lot of Bowie, but I've also just been listening to a lot of seventies classics during the lull between 2015 and 2016 when it picks up, you know. And one that I've fallen in love with is Television's Marquee Moon. This is a classic, obviously. So I can't I, like I don't have that much to say about it, like unique at least, but I'd always been interested in this album just because it's a punk art rock classic from the CBGB scene in New York during the late seventies, which is one of my favorite music scenes. Mm-hmm. But I never really, um, like, every time I try to listen to it, it always just been a bad time. I just wasn't really feeling it. But I always came back to it just because, especially, like, uh, Carrie Brownstein and Corin Tucker from Slater Kenny, they cite that album as, like, their biggest influence. And especially, you can hear it on records like Dig Me Out in the Hot Rock. Mm-hmm. So I, I keep coming back to it. And then, fi- finally, finally, this album clicked in. And I, like, it's, I totally see what it's about. Just because... Well, like I said, it's like art punk, but it's also kind of po- post-punk, but it doesn't really fit any of those descriptions based on what the modern uh, standards are, really. Mm-hmm. And Tom Verlaine and R- Richard Lloyd, they, they kind of started, they, they were interesting because they did kind of dual leads, which you didn't see much before then. It was mostly just a lead guitar and a rhythm guitar. Mm-hmm. Both of them had very intricate um, guitar parts, and they, they actually like wrote out a lot of their 
guitar parts, notated them. They put a lot of work into their music like that. And, and there's a lot of, like, on the face of it, it's just a regular kind of, it's just a really good, like, post-punk album. But, like, there's so much, like, music theory stuff to have a wet dream about. And it's, I mean, yeah, just so many great bangers on it. Bangers. I hate using that description for not future tracks. But, I mean, Mark, Marky Moon, the title track, it's, like, one of the, it's one of the best songs I've ever, one of the best, there's a thread today that put the best title tracks. Marky Moon, baby. So, Alex. Oh, Alex, we can't hear you, buddy. Your mic is muted. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, so, a week before my last radio show um, of this past semester, I um, I kind of, sort of snuck around the station and borrowed some CDs. <laughs> Okay. I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna bring them back, but I wasn't I wasn't uh, supposed to <laughs> take them out of the station. Are you sure you want to tell us on the podcast, Alex? You're just you know, <laughs> um, you're, you're admitting to a crime right now. Yeah, you're admitting to a crime. <laughs> well, I'm bringing it back. And it's not like anyone uses those. They were like weird promo CDs from like the late '90s slash early 2000s, and like. I was like, no one's going to use these, and I thought some of them looked kind of cool, so I took them home. And I, I finally um put them in my iTunes today, and I listened to this album, which is The Kissy Face by Adult Rodeo. And it's, it's really fucking weird. It's mm. like, the first track starts out, it's like, oh my god, it, it was free time like avant folk noise country i don't i don't know what to call it and it was just like this weird voiced female singer kind of in the background where while these um acoustic guitars rhythmically chug uh chug away and like this electric guitar just sort of spasmatically floats over the chat uh, over the track and like no particular time and then the rest of the album only got weirder it's mm. I, it was definitely fun it was a fun listen like it, it didn't that was the only track that was kind of in no particular time signature but um it was just it was just a bizarre like atmosphere you know mm-hmm. um and i definitely recommend listening to it if you can find a copy yeah so, electron uh, spotify was not there yeah. Maybe you could put a mega link in the group description. That would oh. be illegal. <laughs> yeah, true. Well, I mean, we're already breaking laws. Might as well just... Breaking laws. Yeah. All right. Express written consent of the artists and the label. Mm-hmm. The distributor. Yep. Okay, so uh, we should probably get to our main topic. Uh, wow, the, we just went through this, like, what we listened to, like, really fast. We only did one album, and you were, I mean, I didn't have much more to say, but still, you rushed me out of mine. Yeah. But yeah, definitely, I think we should get into our main topic now, which is David Bowie's Black Star. Okay. I mean, where, where do we start with this? Okay, one? so I, I will start because I have my notes. Okay, so David Bowie is a man that means no explanation. I think we, I think everyone, who, I think all of our listeners probably know who he is. They probably know him in some capacity. He's a singer, songwriter, musician, uh, uh, player of many many instruments actor writer uh just Visual multi-talented artist. man fashion person. designer fashion designer Model. just fashion husband. icon husband fashion father. Icon. husband child father he's a playwright father uh fucked mick jagger at one point um allegedly 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 okay but yes he's a man who needs no explanation you know who he is you know him in some capacity uh, this again he recently died you probably uh, okay shit <laughs> that was if the most that was the most was, nonchalant way it. to say oh yeah he died but yeah David Bowie, he sadly yeah. passed away about a week ago a week yeah a week ago after when we're recording this podcast we're recording this on a sunday got it yeah. last sunday evening it's on mm-hmm. the 10th mm-hmm. and you know just like you know when, when that news hit me it was just like because that day well actually i'll talk about let me continue with my background then we'll i'll get into that uh so black star is his uh 25th and uh, final studio album and um, the album takes a lot of influence from uh, experimental jazz in the production and the, a major theme throughout the album is death which uh, you know 
after his passing away makes a lot of sense, uh, you know, kind of taking that in context of the album. And the day he died, it was like, um, it was weird because he was on my mind that day a lot because he just dropped a new album and I was really excited, you know, listening to a bunch of Bowie. And I, like that day I was at, uh, I went to a record store with my, with my girlfriend and I was planning on going to buy some David Bowie, but they only had, um, they only had two things. They had Earthling, which is like, I haven't listened to it, but I've heard it's just this really mediocre album. That's like basically him trying to make like industrial and electronic and music that was popular Bowie had no mediocre. What? Oh, he had no mediocre albums. Is oh, is that something we're not talking about? In twenty-five discussion? tens. Oh yeah, twenty-five ten out tens. No, Dave Bowie had all. How amazing that would be if some artist managed to pull that off. I mean, they did. Because that <laughs> <is, that's laughs> is on their way. No, I'm, but I'm just saying, like, if <laughs> we're gonna make twenty-five albums. <laughs> If if an artist like, cause each album they'd have to top the last, or or it would be like, you know, even even if even if your next album was as good as your last ten, it'd be like, ah, oh, well, this isn't as good. Someone would be like, ah, oh, nine point three or I don't know something. K- so you'd have to you'd K-Dot. have to distinctly top your your last album each time. Kendrick Lamar, Kanye West. David Bowie. Kanye West is arguable, even though Jesus is my favorite Kanye album. It's definitely arguable for some fans. Kendrick also. Here's the thing with Kendrick. Yeah, graduation oh. exists. Oh yeah, there's graduation. I, K- I love graduation. Don't get me wrong. Oh, but, that's my least favorite Kanye by far. But it it has, you know, it has it has, drunk, has bad songs. Drunken songs. hot. His worst songs are on there. It has I wonder, which is just really. I cool. wonder is goat. No. I like, no. uh, yeah. let's see, what was the last yeah, song? Like, the song about Jay Z on there? What was that song Big, again? Big Brother. Big Brother, that song, Big I don't brother. like. That song Big is brother. meh. I it's, like Big Brother. Big Brother is nice, but, like, it's a little corny. It's like, Big I just Brother don't... warms my heart because of how corny it is. It's just so, I don't know, it feels so earnest. Why are we talking? Okay, we need to be talking about Bowie. <laughs> but, anyways, yeah, <laughs> they died. Di- they he died. Goat cast, okay? Goat cast. Okay. Yeah, this is, this is okay. a required Kanye chat. Okay, we need goat at cast. Least one, one per. One, One kind you mentioned per podcast. Okay. Anyways, yes. Uh, Bowie. So the day he died, I was in a record store with my girlfriend. Um, again, he had Earthling that was there, and he had like a nothing was nothing has changed compilation album. And I was like, eh, no, there's nothing I hear. I, I wanted something from the Berlin trilogy, and it, or anything like you know, in the seventies. It was just like, oh, he doesn't have any of that stuff there. Okay. So I bought Pet Sounds instead, and you know, and then like later that night, I'm on Twitter.com, and it's just like, oh, like his. Like I saw something like his Facebook, like his Twitter page get retweeted, and it was like, "Oh, he passed away." It's like, wait, what? No, this has got to be a hoax. This can't be real. He can't. He can't have died. Like he just dropped a new album. There's no way he died. And then you know, he died. It was real, and like it was just like shit. Like I haven't seen a body yet. Yeah. Uh, okay, but <laughs> but yeah. Shut up, Jesus Christ, Will. <laughs> uh, but. <laughs> But we lives. Okay. Anyways, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> He's chilling Tupac with Michael Elvis. Jackson and Tupac. And right. Elvis. Elvis is very much alive. Oh yeah. Yeah. For sure. After all these years. Mm-hmm. Anyways, yes. Uh, so yeah, it, it was so it was weird because he was on my mind so much during that day, and then just like, oh, he's dead. Like he's no longer living. And it's just like. It's so weird. It was like it was just really eerie. But I think I mean he was on a lot of people's minds like the day of his death, like pretty much because he dropped a new album and you know something happened the day he died. Something happened on the day he died. Okay, let's not do that. Okay. Okay, but yeah. Uh, yeah, but... I mean, yeah, m- more more or less the same. I think from basically because I mean, like the night before that, I've been li- I've been listening to his album all weekend, been listening to his music all week long. You know, just get myself in a Bowie Bowie mindset. Yeah. So I mean, it would have been sad either way. But like that, like it was just like what happens. I actually went to sleep before the news hit. Uh-huh. So I woke up in the morning. I, I got I checked my phone. Like I got some. I got like a notification from like symbol. I think so. Like I opened it. Then I saw like a bunch of Bowie songs on my feet. All of a sudden, and then I opened one. Says rest in peace. I was like what the. F-? So I walk into the living room and my mom's watching TV. I ask her if it's true, and she says what? And I said Bowie, and she says yes. And yeah. it's kind of like walking back to my room. And it's like sad. I'm like, fuck. I you know. And he's also we have mentioned he, he he did not disclose any health information. Though. Oh yeah, because he's like, lived a very secret life the past ten or so years mm-hmm. out of public eye. Yeah, and and he hasn't done any interviews or any press for this himself. It's all been Tony Visconti or it's been um, a Donnie McCaslin mm-hmm. that was in the recording band with him. Yeah, 
So. And I remember in one of the interviews, like uh, Tony Visconti said, like, "Oh yeah, he's in fine health," and it's like, "Oh yeah, of course he's in fine health. He's David Bowie. He looks, you know, in the music videos, he yeah. looks just fine." He blatantly lied to us. Yeah. Also, and, he didn't because he was in intermission. Maybe. But still. Yeah. Maybe at the yeah, because I think at the time like he was doing well. It's like oh, he's no longer you know doing chemo, and it just it came back. And you I know. think he probably didn't want to make a big deal of it while he was alive. Yeah, but, you know. right. And things they they also didn't anticipate him to die this soon because like Tony says he was on the phone with him like a week earlier. Yeah, and he sounded fine. He had been he planning work with Brian Eno. He had written five songs for a new album. Like <laughs> I think he did demos. I think he actually recorded demos for those five songs. Yeah, but like yeah. The, any of you guys listen to NPR All Songs Considered podcast with the uh, talker? I do not. Tony, I have they talked to Tony and Donnie. And they're talking about how like his demos like really, they're like really like detailed. Like he records it all himself. Like he's learned how to use the computer and stuff. Mm-hmm. So he might get those demos someday if he's been recording them. That, dude, there's gonna be so many compilation albums they're gonna oh, drop. Yeah, it's really, this is gonna last, be thrown though. in one of them. Because like again, he dropped. He just dropped like two compilation albums in the past like two years or so, pretty much. Like, he had five years and nothing was changed, so, like, we'll probably get another one, like, towards the end of the year or, like, next year. It wouldn't I mean, be it's crazy, though, that, like, he released that much music, but there's still probably a lot of unreleased music, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's true, yeah. He's definitely still, ha- he still has to have, like, you know, stuff from all the sessions that just didn't come out somehow. Yeah, and, or, know, or, or, like, no, what's the worst, like, with Bob Dylan, how they have, like, all those, like, alternate takes? It's like, no one gives a yeah. shit. They, they're no still one... finding excuses to release new Beatles compilation albums. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, no. I mean, yeah. <laughs> the fucking, even though fucking Anthology came out. <laughs> <laughs> well, they uh, remaster, like, twice every two years. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, anyway, we should probably get back to the album, Black Star. Um... I don't. I think we're right. We're gonna. It just. It's gonna happen. In the discussion. But I do want this, this. This discussion not to be about David Bowie's career or how sad we are about his death. We want to talk about the album and the. And his death is very important in the context of the album. But that's not. We, we want. We want to talk about this album. We're gonna try our best to discuss this album without like any sort of bias. Like it's a ten out of ten because <laughs> Bowie died. Like let's judge yeah. the album on its own merits. It's a ten out of ten because he died. Ten out of ten. To be. I honest. mean, here's the thing. Part of the album coming out, we would all rate it pretty highly. Like I know you rated highly, Will. I probably rate, rated it highly. But when it, what, what, but his death brings in it. It just makes a lot of stuff on the album make makes a lot more sense. Like, oh shit, it's, this was him yeah, telling was us very goodbye. Cryptic. Listening to it last weekend before he died. Yeah. Like I was like, like I, when I was making notes, like just for whenever we did the podcast, and I was thinking like, I'm not even gonna try to get into the lyrics just because like what the hell is he talking about? But then, like th- that morning. Like just a few minutes after I heard about him, I turned on the song Lazarus, and then that would just it just crushed down on me. It's like I know this like it's yeah. so obvious, you know. I mean, like, yeah, up, you know, and even even Black Star makes sense now. The title, yeah, track. On the di- like, yeah when that came out, I was like, "What the fuck?" And now, now I'm just it's like now I'm st- I'm still like, "What the fuck?" Because that's it's still a "What the fuck" track, but that's why I love I it. I think I think it's him reflecting on celebrity and kind of the cycle of celebrity and his life and career yeah, i think he's like that's, reflecting on the, what's on what would happen after he died yeah yeah that's i think because like he's like saying like what he is what he's also yeah. arguably he's it's about, about major some tom figure being but the thing is, like replaced and yeah I don't yeah know. the thing is like he, he since he's dead he can't like he can't tell us like what we ever we say he was is what he was because he can't say yeah. oh, not or he can't make another album say oh i don't make rock music you know mm-hmm. yeah he is what we have now uh, but, but yeah, the sum. I, I think we all. It's it, it's an incredible album. I mean, again, without his death, it's just like, it's so great because it's definitely it was it's definitely Bowie's best album since like I want to say the Berlin trilogy. Is that fair to say? That's probably a little bit bold, but I would say, definitely I mean, say that, it's his that's, best. That's the Berlin bold, trilogy. but I mean, here's I like the, it I mean, better than the Berlin trilogy. Here's here's something we also have I haven't to heard Lodger yet. Bring into consideration is that. I mean, none of us we're, we're we're young folk here. Yeah, we're all most young. Of be- most of his best music was released before we were born. Yeah. So I mean, we have a very strong recency bias. Yeah. Yeah. So take that with, in a way, take, take our opinions with a grain of salt. In that yeah, so, we're not a bunch of old geezers. Okay, any, but 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 yeah, I, the Berlin trilogy is a great. It, what I like about some is that it brings back the experimentation that he was doing on the Berlin trilogy, and like it's a successful experiment because he's been he's he's done a couple of like 
some experiment like earthling is, is arguably experimental in the industrial stuff but i think the problem with that it was just like it was too trendy i guess it was like oh he's just like doing what is is it basically was like oh he's just kind of he didn't put like his unique bowie spin on like some of the stuff he was doing it was just like oh this just sounds like a nine inch nail song that was that has david bowie singing over it um, I mean, going back to Will's comment on recency bias, I'm not actually sure if that's a bad thing. Uh, yeah, it's you not know, a bad Because I think not, it allows you to, to be more open-minded about the new music. Because, like, when I started listening to uh, Radiohead, for example, you know, like, most people don't like King of Limbs as much. And maybe it's just who I am, but that's one of my favorite Radiohead records. And I think for a lot of people, part of it might have been, you know, just kind of knowing their discography already and having, like their feelings in order about the band and then it comes out and they're just like i don't know it's just hard to make room for it i guess yeah so i feel like if if people who grew up with bowie who like were around when ziggy stardust came out or i mean that's a bad example because that album is just fucking incredible but Real yeah. OGs you know you know like they're gonna have a bias towards those albums and even if black star was as good, which I personally think it is, but even if Black Star was Wait, like just factually, somehow factually as good as those records, they are, they might not consider it as much, and might not even ever consider putting it with those other older albums that he had, because they're gonna have, you know. Uh, one their thing own for me about this album is that thing is that it's not even a bad thing for Bowie, but I think a lot of his music is really dated. Like, I think it's still good. I mean, like, what I mean by is that, like, the melody sounds strong. I get what you mean. It's not dated in a bad way. It's definitely, it's very, like, it's 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 very 70s. It it sounds of its time, you know? But it's but thing yeah. is, it's not like data. Of course, data is not automatically bad. Sometimes, data, like I personally, like I think Tupac, like I think his stuff is seriously dated Absolutely. and not in the best way. Yeah. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But Bowie, it's definitely very seventies. But it's it's produced well enough. And here's the thing with rock I mean, music: it, it's kind of hard it, for rock music to sound is good like songwriting and good performing is good performing. So ultimately, yeah. that's what makes it good for me. Yeah. But the thing is that just the sounds on this album, not not even this, like the style, just the sounds on it, are just so much fresher. Oh yeah, yeah. Not, again, it, we should we should yeah, mention that this album took a lot of influence. Again, one of the influences on this album, or two of the influences, were uh, Kendrick Lamar and his album "To Pimp a, Butterf- to Pimp a Butterfly" and uh, "Death Grips." Also, also hear a lot of "Boards of Canada." Oh yeah, "Boards of Canada." He was listening to a lot yeah. of "Boards of Canada." I love that. That made me so happy when I first heard about it. it was just Which like. Part? I don't know, just that just that he was listening to all these new artists and he was making this fucking batshit music that's weirder than a lot of the music the kids are making. <laughs> I think I, it's, I think it's a big thing, because, like, uh, with some of his contemporaries, I think I discussed this in a review that it's not out yet. I think it's from my school newspaper. I said that, like, the next day was definitely sort of, it was a, I haven't listened to it, but I've heard it's a good album, but what, from what, also what I've heard is that, like, it's, from what, yeah. the track, it's I, I very, have listened to it. yeah. it's, from what I've heard, it's, it's very, very traditional like, rock. return album from aged rock star that's good. <laughs> it's you like, know, it's, it's like, sounds kind of like his 80s, it sounds like very like a Talking Heads album, kind of like Let's Dance, yeah. basically. You, you listen to it, and it just rock. makes sense. Like, you listen to it, and it just makes sense. Black Star, you listen to, and it's kind of a what the fuck, you know? See, but I'm starting to question your integrity as a journalist, Maddie, because you're talking about albums. Yeah, I mean, listen to I know. To I'm just, again, I'm going <laughs> on, I'm, I've heard some songs the next day. I didn't mind them, but it was definitely like, oh, this is just kind of traditional rock. Like, I mean, Paul McCartney, he this, makes this traditional sort of rock. Rehash. Bob Dylan, it's sort like, it's it was it just seemed like a rehash. It was like, I think it was necessary just to kind of get his groove back. But for him to go from the next day to like this shit is like yeah. is crazy because it's it's just such a large jump. But but should but should it really surprise us though? It's not, I mean, it's not surprising because it's considering Bowie, it's Bowie, Bowie during, but during one yeah. decade in the seventies, how many times did he? I know, but it, it 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 just seemed like oh, with this sounds like oh, is he gonna just do? Another? But I mean, again, here's the thing. I'll, I'll tell a story of how I got into David Bowie. It, it was a few months ago. Uh, the Black Star single dropped with the music video, and I was just like forward just those 10 minutes of just like what the fuck is yeah. this it's i was like... confused and kind of scared <laughs> yeah. on too, a little bit. Yeah. oh god well jesus okay but, but... bandages man <laughs> but it was like oh my god like and i just kept listening to it on repeat it was just like it just enticed me so much and i'm like holy shit i have not gotten to david bowie and then i'm like okay i go check out a bunch of david bowie albums you know hunky dory ziggy stardust uh low heroes 
Uh, what else did I check out? Uh, station to Station? Oh, yeah, Station to Station. I checked out... Uh, I've got, I think it's ever since his death, I didn't listen to everything, so I've changed that. Like oh, now I've insane. got, I've not actually listened to that yet. I'm, it was, oh. I was going to, I was trying oh, to, but it was like, poser alert. I was trying to, but I, I think I got, I was talking to my girlfriend <laughs> and I got distracted and I was like, I got to listen to the, this, the hero song. Cause it was just like, okay, that's the song. It's like, that's me right now is that song. It's like, Nerd. I have to listen to it. <laughs> literally, literally. But no, I checked out, I checked out Young Americans, um, Diamond no Dogs, The Man Who Sold the World. Uh, I need to listen to Let's Dance it, still. That's when I have self titled is pretty terrible. I but... no self titled I skipped that. One? Space Oddity, I'm skipping that. Oh yeah, the first Space one. Space Oddity is worth listening to. Though. I'll listen to Space Oddity because I, I, I will heard mixed I will things. always I'll listen to the first one because I wanted to, that sometimes like the albums like that, like where it's like, Oh, this is their like their um like their mess up album, their This is their shitty debut. Yeah, like <laughs> yeah. like for me like that enticed me. It's like, ooh, I wanna hear what it sounds like, you know? Maybe. What, was, what was it like? It was like, it was like witnessing a stillborn birth. Oh God! Okay. I've never seen a shooting star. Okay, we got five uh, years. In okay, we, we've barely talked about stuff on this album. We've been talking about like all his death and whatever. But I, 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 let's get into the album. No, you started this time, bro. Can I, I know? Make, can I, I make one this. more comment about his career? Why yes. Not? The dude. It. The dude released more albums than there were years in the 1970s, and like almost all of them are essential. <laughs> So oh, not all, Piper, Piper I, I, released more albums than there were days in 2015. Okay? <laughs> like, yeah. Oh yeah, big deal, big I, deal. I know everyone talks but about. Are like, any his... of them even worth listening to? I mean, in, in if this, you combine oh, yeah. all the track, they probably be at least as good as one of. <laughs> I... Jesus Christ! I were talking about Viper. I've heard, I've heard Pam wasn't that good. I listened to you, old coward. Okay. It was no really powers. weird. Don't. I've listened to a few tracks. Right. Okay, back to, <laughs> back to Black Star. Okay. Um, but yeah, this is a really interesting album. Again, the influences he took on this album are really kind of, they're not super apparent, but like when you dig deeper, you go, Oh, that makes sense. Like, well, like the, could, the, the, the kind of like how they use jazz instrumentation, but not making jazz music. Yeah, exactly. It's kind of similar to, to Memphis Butterfly. And also it has a similar feel. Something I said in the chat yesterday, I don't think Alex was here, but that, this album reminds me of an amnesiac. Oh, yeah, okay. I get that. I, yeah, I, I get that. Because it creates a, it's very, it's very appealing, but it's also very un, like it's not a cozy album by any stretch of the imagination. It's very disorienting and very uncomfortable, kind of dark, yeah. eerie, kind of. Which yeah. makes sense considering it's a. Big... It's very, un, it's very unsafe. Yes, which I think is the album like, he let's... needed. Which is the album I think he needed to make after the next day, because the next day was like it was our, it was it, it just seemed like a safe album, and then based like, on like two or three tracks you heard. Yes. Okay, Jesus Christ! You I mean, again? If I said it was safe, you would agree with me, right? Well, yeah, but I mean, I have, I have credit. Okay, I'll listen credit to it. And I'll, I'll listen to it, then I'll have something to say. That's official. It's, it's a good album. I feel like I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just it's saying definitely it's definitely worth listening to. Okay. Even... I mean, like we said, he had ten. He's had twenty five tens. Yeah, yeah twenty five tens. Oh. Okay, Black Star. Okay, but yes, the Kendrick Lamar <laughs> influence is kind of apparent from the production. That it's very you know jazz influence, but not exactly being jazz. Cause there's, cause he hops from a couple, like I think, like, on on um on Suda season of crime, there's some serious like towards the end, there's some serious like industrial influence in there, yeah, which is like you know very Death Grips esque, or even Nine Inch Nails esque. Well, for me, like, like, like for me, like musically, it's not so much Death Grips, but like kind of in the lyrical, the ly- kind of just like the shocking lyrics. A girl loves me. A girl loves me is very like. There's some lyrics in there that's like, like oh yeah, I could easily Mo- see that. Where on the fuck did Death. Monday go? I could see that being. A, the hottest meme on Ardash, Death Grips. Oh yeah. So yeah, it was so you know taking modern influences. The Boards of Canada. I don't listen to them as much, so I can't really like explain whatever influence they had. Maybe one of you well, guys they totally could. Totally did. Alex, could you? Do you listen? To, how much Boards of Canada do you listen to? Um, I. I've heard part of Tomorrow's Harvest, and I've heard. I mean, um, Tommy okay, York's like, Ra- Radiohead yeah. likes Boards of Canada, so if you haven't listened to Boards of Canada, you're not really. No, I've listened to them. I just, yeah. I just can't. I don't I'm listen to Alex. Alex. I've listened to Boards of Canada because of Radiohead. It's and, not. And Don I, I dug a... music is the right to children, but not in like an active like "ooh, this is great" kind of way. You know. Yeah. It was Don Chorus. That's the name of their, uh, their company they just made is based off of the Boards of Canada song. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I, okay. Uh, what, what what do I have my notes about Black Star? Yeah, okay, uh, let's, start, let's, start, let's start with the first track and just kind of 
Or yeah, we'll, we'll actually, yeah, we'll go track by track because there's only seven tracks, and I think it's easy to talk about them that way. Yeah, we'll, so. we'll kind of, we'll kind of go quick, but yeah, I mean, yeah, just fucking great for, for me. This song also kind of, I know yet bring this album up every podcast, but it reminds me of Let It Happen, kind of, and is that oh. it's a sprawling opener to an oh, album. Yeah. yeah, it's it's, it's, it's an epic. It, 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 is, it just pulls out every stop he has, like every trick he has, he pulls it out. Mm-hmm. And just, it just feels like an artist working at their very full potential. Like this is this was the very best that we could give us. Yeah, I wasn't I, I, it, it's that. definitely it's definitely my favorite song on the album. It's definitely one of the best Bowie songs of all time, in my opinion. From what I've heard, fight me on it, but because it's because it, there's again there's three parts to it, and they're all so like different and great, and it's like so, uh, so the thing is like the thing is like I'm glad he released as a single before the album because I I didn't know what I, I knew it was good, but like I didn't know how it made me feel when I first listened to it. I'm like, do I enjoy this song? <laughs> yeah, I, I like, enjoy it. I just I like didn't it. know how the song made me feel. I was like. Like, it was just wild. Like now, I love it. Obviously, but like, I'm not sure if he released it at the same time as the album. I would be saying that right now. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it might it might actually be my least favorite on the record. And I've said that. I've said that before, but it's not it's not because of the song. There's nothing about Black Star like that I don't Cole. like. It's just like. It doesn't. Mm, like, the, the other it, songs it's, it's are not so... as cohesive. It's <sighs> it, it it doesn't like quite fit so well. No, it fits. It definitely fits for me. It's just like the album also has "Girl Loves Me," "Sue," "Tis a Pity She Was a Whore," all, "Dollar Days," all songs that don't match and up. And I to can't give Black everything Star. away. And Lazarus, and it's just like. I get, I get what you mean though. The the rest of the album does feel like more of a cohesive experience, and then Black Star is just sort of Black Star seems like it's like a state, it's, it's better on its own because it is it's so like subject matter wise, it just seems so different from the rest of the album because it's like, I mean, actually a big thing on the album that I don't think people talk about that much is like there's some some big sex influences on the album. Yeah, yeah I mean, Lots he takes a lot from the John Ford play called "Tis a Pity She Was a Whore." Mm-hmm. That was that was a big influence, on, especially the, that song "Anticipation" was a horror, and the song "Sue." Mm-hmm. Those, in a way, those are making explicit reference. I haven't seen that play, but based on Genius dot com, that's what he's doing. In a way, it's um, it kind of feels like Black Star is side A, and the rest of the album is side B. I know that's yeah, not could... actually how it works, but it's like you know what I mean. I I, I can see that. He, Albums, he, it's a very I, back when vinyl statement. was like the main the main you know way to listen to a record it was albums used to be split up a bit more in that way you know see, be like see, two cohesive halves and, mm-hmm. and, and that's Hunky kind of what it feels great, like hunky dory's like that's kind of relevant but that's a great example of an album that does that yeah it's like because like i mean um earthquake feels like a closing track kind of and then um what's the name of the song uh the one after earthquake yeah what's the name of the song the Man, I have the CD. Uh, after Earthquake, it is... There's no song called Earthquake on here. Are you talking about Quicksand? Quicksand? What Nerd. What the hell am I on, man? Quicksand. Oh, after on. the Quicksand, it's Fill Your Heart. Fill Your Heart, yeah. That one feels like an opening track, you know? Mm-hmm. Feels like a new beginning. I mean, anyways, back... Yeah, but this song's kind of crazy. Like, so on on the back of the really... CD, there's the, the sides are split up distinctly. Rather yeah. than just a... So, so times have changed since Bowie started out, but yeah, yeah. it's a very cryptic song that that it also took a lot more meaning after he died. Even 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 after his death, it's still pretty cryptic because like a lot of people are wondering like who was about like is it about himself? Is it about Major Tom? Is it about like the music video? Like right. they would assume like from the music video, which is a great music video, one of the best of last year. It's like is this about Major Tom? Like what the f- like? Oh, there's a. Girl. I thought it was about a cult. <laughs> yeah, I, I that was kind of the easy way out. Only though. woman needn't smile. I thought it was like directly about a cult, and then that was like a metaphor for something else <laughs> that he didn't know. And, uh-huh. it, and in a way, it kind of was. But it's like the, 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 the song. The song the in my opinion, and talks of... about celebrity, and you know, like so. I guess that that could kind of work. But the song anyway, starts what saying... and ends kind of feel, feels like a chant almost. It's very yeah. unsettling, and then all of a sudden it comes into the middle. It's it just breaks out with this beautiful melody. And it's just very Bowie esque melody. Mm. And then something happened on the day he died. Spirit and then that, so obviously that that specific lyric, listening to it the morning he died, 
very haunting. Mm-hmm. Then, but then somebody else took his place. It's kind of comforting because he kind of makes his place like, I'm not the first great artist. I'm not the last, you know. I mean, we mm-hmm. still have Kanye West. So, oh, yeah. That, actually, you know, I was going to talk about that because there's a theory on the, the Ziggy Stardust album cover. Above his head is a sign that says K West. Did you see my circle? And then the song. The day? Oh, did you, did, you, did you post that? The 4chan post from it? I was like explaining like. Oh, I'm no, talking, that probably wasn't as good. No, I'm talking about like a 4chan post. It was like, it was like the song five years, five years after Ziggy yeah. Stardust came out, 70, Kanye West like, was born. 77, Kanye West was in June that year. Yeah, June yeah. of that year. So, Ziggy Stardust, Ziggy came, Stardust out June came out in June. Ziggy Stardust came out in June of 72 and Kanye, June, June of 70. 77. It was like, did he just predict Kanye West? Yeah, and then it also says like um like Ziggy Stardust is the story of like a rock star that came to teach of love, like like I hear something I wrote like Ziggy Stardust represents the definitive rock star, sexually promiscuous, wild and drug intake with but with a message ultimately of peace and love. He's destroyed both by his own consumptions and by the fans he inspired. Yep, the definitive rock star destroyed by his ego. Mm-hmm. Like, that's that is that is Kanye West. Ah! But but yeah, let's back, back to the Black Star. Uh, the song, I guess. Uh, but but great song. Like it, the the three sections are all incredible. Like the beginning is so weird because it kind of get, it gets into it very quickly because there's no like, it, it like it feels like uh, in it, some it's, ways it's kind of like, like Jesus because it's he throws you in there without like you you expect water when you first sit down at the restaurant and he David Bowie doesn't give you water. No, he gives you a big old uh two liter uh, bottle of wine and says drink it up. I don't know. That, that's a bad. I'm sorry. Cut that. <laughs> cut, cut. Cut. Matt. Whenever you start at me, whenever you edit this, cut that joke out. Whenever you it's, do the cut audio that editing. Part out. Cut, cut you telling yourself to cut it out. Oh. Cut, yeah. Cut it out. Okay. That's anyway, very unprofessional. We should. Okay. We should probably get to the next track. Anticipate. She was a whore. Um. Honestly, my least favorite track on the album. <sighs> it's honestly. I, love, I don't. Okay. I. It's still good, but like, it's like. Uh. It. it it so, just feels. So you, I'm, feel, I'm, I feel, you feel the way I feel about Black Star about Tizipity. Yeah, it's 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 sort of like it doesn't. It's not completely out of place, but it's definitely like. It, it feels like okay, maybe you're a little too old to be talking about this, David Bowie. Like it kind of feels <laughs> that way for Con- me. Contrary, he he's finally old enough to start talking like this, start rambling like this, and go and people will just accept it. Maybe. I mean, he like. You know, he well, was maybe. dying. So awesome. it's like, so it's like, Tizzy she was a whore. It's like, yeah, she was a whore. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Isn't that there's, there's a, so, there's yeah, a, yeah, Bowie. Like, there's he's a like, movie. yeah, I agree. <laughs> Okay. There's a movie called Dirty Grandpa coming out starring Robert De Niro and Zach Efron coming out where this month. That so looks terrible. That looks... it's terrible. It's a yeah, fuck you which yeah, January movie awful. through and through. Okay, yeah, this looks atrocious. Um, so, so for me, that track, I, what I like about this song is like, it kind of feels like it marries two of the later tracks, um, Sue, and I can't give everything away because it's got. It's got the same intensity as Sue, just in the bass, like, instrumentation and drums and shit. Yeah, the question is fantastic. Under that is this very, yeah, like, it's, it's smooth. Yeah, a really rockin' drum beat. Smooth, song. like, the, for some reason, Tis a Pity, She Was a Whore feels almost calming to me compared to the rest of the tracks on the album. Except for I Can't Give Everything Away, obviously. Yeah. Um, I, like I said, I like it. It's just like I mean, if I had to pick a least favorite, I'd pick that one. Like okay. it's just, I think the production on it is incredible. Like that end part where like it's just everything's going crazy is amazing. But Bowie, it just feels like it, it's one of the times where I would criticize. Maybe it's like maybe you're a little too old to be singing this, and maybe your voice isn't as like good as it used to be. It's like uh, I've mixed, like mixed feelings. See, I don't know. Like, he's incoherently like rambling about like oh, it's a pity she was a whore. He just sounds like a crazy old dude. Like, yeah. like, like the lyric, like, I don't know why, like, man, she punched me like a dude. It just feels like, yeah, uh, I, I don't know, man. If anyone know. deserves to say that line, though, I feel like it's Bowie. It is, but it's, it's like, like Bowie also, fits, but it doesn't. Dude. Um, it's, it's, things like, it, it's like a shoe size like that's, like, slightly too big. It's it, it's like David Bowie, he wears, like, a 10, like, he wears a 10 shoe, but he tries putting on, like, a 10.5 shoe. It's like, maybe, you no. Know, it still fits you, kind of, but you know. That's something about very, the, something I want to say is like um very well, articulate, Maddie. Like I said, he sounds like have like an old old dude rambling. Like the song actually starts with him like breathing in deeply or clearing his throat like right before the drums come in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which I think it might be him like calming down after the last song or just kind of just kind of like a cryptic message that he's not well. 
Is that he has to catch his breath? Or he's just like, okay, I'm about to get into the story real quick, okay? This bitch. Or like, okay. I'm, like, it's like, it's like, hold on, I'm about to go in here. I kind of okay. like that, him calming down after Black Star, because cause you know how I feel. Like, I feel like this song is kind of chill, even though it's, like, weird and intense. Like, at the same time, it's, like, it's calm about being weird it, and it, intense. It's a come you know? down. It's, it's the come down after Black Star. It's, like, cold the and The album's a come down. Okay. Um, well, yeah. Well, one, one more thing I, say, I don't, shout I don't, out to Donnie McCaslin. I don't agree with the, the criticism album. about his voice oh, yeah. because if you listen to Dollar Days, it's clear that he can sing. He can still sing well. It's well just, I'm not saying like, he can't sing well. He's I'm just choosing saying... to do this. Yeah. Okay. You're, you're the guy who won't listen to the smile. Um, Brian Wilson smile. <laughs> oh, he doesn't sound good anymore. But you. Claim Brian Wilson smiles. presents okay. smile sounds fucking great. Okay, I will listen. <sighs> Okay, yeah, let's get to the not, next track, Lazarus, <laughs> because you guys are just ganging up on me, because I... You guys are ganging up on me. I'm the host of the podcast. I can fire both of you, okay? Yeah, I'll do fire. it. No mercy. Yeah, yeah you, you get kicked out the chat. Two of your most yeah. active members. I That's true. Do I don't want to fire you guys, because there's no one else who does this podcast. <laughs> it's just... God, I don't want to get into the podcast stuff, but it's like, <laughs> fuck, people. Be on, please. I see you in the chat. You can be on. Okay, Um. anyways, Lazarus. The song, I think it's the most, of all the songs, it's the most explicitly about his death. Like, it, it's yeah. the song everyone's like, oh, shit, that, oh, this song's about his death. Oh, oh, no. Even though the song is about the character from the man who sold, not the man who sold the world, the, uh, the man who fell to Earth. It's still very representative of Bowie. It's like, oh, like, the first, the first line is like, okay, look up look here, up man. Here like, yeah, I don't, I don't think that song is necessarily about... I think it's about being high, but like, I don't. It's no, it's he, become about his death, you know. Because no, I don't of, think. So. I mean, like, he just says he's so high once, and I think that that might be like him on chemo. Yeah, that's true. That's true. It's fair. But yeah, I, I think, but that trick's well, been, it's been discussed to death. Like, you know, is it about his death? And it's like, yeah. I mean, all the songs the, are about his death. It's some a, way. considered by a lot of people to be the quintessential swan song, like that song. Oh yeah. Like a lot of people, just because that was like a single and everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's considered by many because it's so explicitly, seemingly about his death that people just think like that. Because I, I'll be honest, also and say, he dropped the video two days before he died. Exactly. And I love the shimmy he does, like the. Oh yeah, the shimmy, shimmy that you can't see on the yeah. audio. Uh, but it, I when I first listened to this track, it it was good, but it was like not as good as Black Star. But you know, with his death, it was like, oh shit, oh, okay, see, oh me, man, there you go. Was like Black Star was a great song. But I still wasn't convinced, just because, like, he could, he could have one good song and, like, yeah. not make a good album. But then when I heard this song, I'm like, okay, now, like, you had my interest, now you have my attention, you know? Yeah, I, I remember exactly. you saying those exact words. <laughs> yeah, I remember. So, like, because, I mean, it pretty, like, wasn't fluke. And, like, he was, that was part of his musical, because his musical, he wrote kind of around the same time of writing this album. It's called The Lazarus is, is a part of the musical. Yeah, and it's, um starring Michael C. Hall, and he did it on The Tonight Show. Mm-hmm. And he does a damn good Bowie. Mm-hmm. Check it out. Check it out. And we'll have oh. it in the description. Sure, I'll put it in the description if I remember. Um, anyways, uh, so, uh, is there anything else we want to discuss with this track? I honestly, I just can't say much because like, it's been discussed to death. Like, it's, yeah. it's a really good track. Really eerie. Just like, oh, shit. Well, okay. uh, I think this one, more so than any other track, like just like highlights how modern and like fresh that's like the most fresh sounding track on the album to me just like the production and everything just the sounds the, the songwriting itself just everything about it mm-hmm. sounds like 2016 you know yeah uh so okay let's get into uh sue or in a season of crime um another a great track because it's Song like fucking nuts it is nuts it, it is seriously oh, nuts yeah. it was one of the songs that he released in that compilation last year before mm-hmm. um black star like he, he actually recorded it with some other band is this a new that. wait so is this a different version than this the one is, that was released in the version. compilation oh it's a new version it's a different version okay. it's not that much different though i've listened to both of them and they're similar but not identical uh-huh the baseline on this i mean song. donnie mccaslin kills it throughout this album shouts out to him he's the band leader and the saxophonist oh yeah but this is another song where he just i mean he's the co-star on this album you know Mm-hmm. Yeah, 
Uh, yeah, we should talk about the band a little bit. So basically, the band that he got for this album is like this jazz quintet that he found at like this random bar in like New York City. Is like, hey, you want to play on my album? <laughs> it's like um, yeah, that was basically yes. how it went down. Yeah, I mean, but yeah, more or less. You're David Bowie. Yes, and you're and you're Donnie <laughs> McCaslin. Yeah, and then they just went to the studio like four days a week for like four hours back in, like March. Mm-hmm. Just just banged it out. Mm-hmm. So I'm I'm reading the lyrics right now. It's very like uh, I I don't know how to describe this song. This like, one is I'm also sure. based on the play "Tis a Pity She Was a Whore." It's like a 17th century play. Oh okay. And like this one's like I said, this is all according to Genius. So maybe this is all bullshit. But I thought this like no, supposed... Sue has been around longer than the play, though. No, not the song. Because it was on the Five Years compilation. No, no, but not the. We're not talking no, about the this... song. We're talking about the song, like the the lyrics. What, no, like, we're, talk, we're talking about the, not, not his Lazarus play. This is based on a play from the 17th century. Oh, oh, yeah. Okay, play. okay. And okay. this is like more modern telling, like the first. The, the, t- the song Tis a Pity She is a Whore is kind of like a retelling of the book almost. Yeah. This one is like a modern telling, uh-huh. like an alternative take. So, yeah, but yeah, this track, it is, it, like, I think it's very intense. It's very fast paced. Those drums it's, are just like the, the drums, which, track. the percussion yeah. done by James Murphy on this song is just incredible. And then, like, towards the end, when it just, like, builds into this, like, industrial tinged, like, the, like, the synths are like, dun, 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 dun. Exactly like, they're like, in the house. Like, yeah, like it's like those rubbing scents that kind of remind me of like some of the stuff on the name at Sensation, which it, it's just like you know, just it's really you know intense and it just like just it just just like fades out like, just like the machine just like breaks pretty much and it's like yeah. oh shit and then it goes into you know Girl Was Me which I, actually no I'm gonna we're going like I'm just going straight into the next well, yeah I don't I don't have anything else yeah Can it goes straight through... like how amazing the bass is all across this album or at least just take a moment like for me the bass was the second most appealing thing about this record other than just like bowie um Mm -hmm. the bass on this album on every track is like fucking amazing and it's really driving yeah big part of the song kind of moves the song forward it's it's like an important part of the song structure rather than just sort of like something to fill out the sound in the background mm-hmm. which i always i always appreciate that when it's you know kind of the driving instrument um although it isn't it isn't on a lot of the tracks but it's featured in the same way um a guitar might be on some of the songs like yeah. in sue anyway we can move on to girl loves me um so yeah girl is... loves me which is again another fantastic track which i i think i mentioned earlier that it's very the lyrics, there's some lyrics on that that would easily fit well onto, like, Chitty Death. Like, where the fuck did Monday this, go? That would, that... This, I love that. If it line. didn't die, that'd be a bigger meme. Yeah. Yeah, no, no I was prepared on Monday. Oh, yeah, was, you were, you were so like, the, oh, yeah, let's do this. Are, like, man, I still kind of want to do it. I think at the time, I think we'll make it a meme, but that's mm-hmm. <laughs> not here. That's not here or there. Point is that this one is inspired by Clockwork Orange. And has, have either of you seen that yeah. movie? I, yeah, the well, the, dro- the, dro- the droogs. <laughs> yeah, well, the, the books too. But yeah, that's one of David Bowie's favorite books, and it's inspired by the lingo of the droogs, which are like yeah. his henchmen. Mm-hmm. And yeah, like I love the way that the song starts, like da 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 da. Like, it's like a weird, like almost like nursery rhyme chant and pattern yeah. with all these weird, made up British sounding words. Like again, some of those lyrics like they remind me of stuff on Redacted on the Moon. Like I'm reading them right now, and it's like, like, basically it's cryptic nonsense. But it's like this has to mean something, you know. But the things that we, I think it will someday it will all make sense. To Death Grips, mm-hmm. it just happened faster for Bowie. It's just like the timing, mm-hmm. and also because he that, that's the crazy thing. Like he died on Sunday night, and like the news didn't break till like Monday morning. Mm-hmm. We were all great. So like thing is like we're ready to meme this, and it's like. And then the thing is, like, like, like all of you, like, I was really devastated at first. Yeah. Like, it took me at least, like, several hours just, like, to get ready for the day. Uh-huh. Yeah. So it's like, where the fuck did Monday go? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, I spent, like, most of Monday crying on and off, and I, I remember, like, hearing that lyric um, at the end of the day when I finally listened to the album, and it was just like, fuck. Where did it's he... like, how he even predicts the day of his death. Yeah. Only <laughs> Bowie would most... do yeah. yeah, this is probably my favorite non-single track. 
I like Blackstorm mm. Lazarus a lot, but I think it's my favorite besides those, just because it's just a really demented sounding groove. Uh huh. And just. I read these fucking so words. I love it. I read these goddamn lyrics. You vidi at the china, chudis knee with the red rot. Would be loving yeah. litso fitso. Devacha yeah, watcher yeah. garbles. I, someone it's, did roughly translate on Genius, though. Yeah, it's Clockwork Orange. I have not watched the movie or read the book, so I have no see, idea. Yeah, see, that's what, why. What actually, I don't get it either because I just know that. I don't actually know what it means. It's actually kind of funny. We were talking about, like, how on, on, on um, Anticipation as a Horror, I was kind of talking about, like, maybe Bowie's a little too old to be doing this stuff, but, like, when he says a line, like, who the fuck's going to mess with me? Like, it just fits. It's like. Yeah, Bo, you're a fucking badass. Who's gonna mess with you? Who's gonna mess? Cancer. Oh. Uh, oh. 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 Mm. Well. Oh. Okay. Oh. Next track. Oh. You're... <laughs> okay. Next. We're gonna. Okay. Uh, Dollar Days. Uh, another great track. Oh, did we mention that girl was me? He also did. Uh, James Murphy. Murphy also did the uh, percussion on goat, that. Goat. Goat. Yeah. Okay. Anyways. Uh, Dollar Days. Um. Dollar Days is one four minute heartbreak. Mm-hmm. It's a it's the best new track, you know. I mean, that's all you gotta say. It's the best new track. This one's very. I don't know for a fact if it's in his musical, but it's very the most theatrical song on the album. Oh yeah, I agree. It definitely sounds very like uh, sort of like a like a doozy. Is that a, I can fuck it? Why a doozy? That's not a, that's not a thing. I know what the what. You don't hey, have my brain. What are you doing? This. Okay, uh, but yeah, it's it's. It, yeah, very theatrical, very sort of like uh, like some of those lines are just like sort of dramatic is is the word I'm looking for. Yeah, like you know, like, yeah, and then I, think like this one really more really creates a sense of like um hope, kind of like being down to his last hope, like his back's against the wall. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. It really feels like his last stand, kind of. Yeah. And mm-hmm. you know, some very you know interesting lyrics. You know, like the the, the song like I'm dying too, which it's like. Mm-hmm. There's no, there's no comma there, but it's like, oh, that's, oh, oh, that's really eerie. Jesus Christ, he was telling us he's dying, and it's like we didn't listen. Yeah. Like, what could, he, what could we have done though? That's true. <laughs> it's like fly out to New <laughs> York. Your cancer. Like, oh my God! Like I'm gonna get you through this, Billy. Yeah. But yeah, very interesting track. Um, I I don't have much to say about the track. It's it's really good, you know. Just some really eerie lyrics. The production on it again, fantastic. Um, Par for the course. Yeah, the chorus. You know, like the chorus. It, also, it ends it ends with like a it, or at the very end. It kind of it's kind of like fading out, and then the drum beat switches up, really randomly, and then it leads directly right into the next track. Oh yeah. I love yeah. It. Where it's like yeah, yeah, it ends up with like yeah, this like that's drum a really machine. Good contr- uh... Yeah, the th- thing is, like, it keeps the drum beat when it starts the next song, but then, like, all the other instrumentation is... Oh, yeah, it's very inconsistent, because, like, over the other tracks, they don't really, like, like smoothly transition in the next one, but for some reason, Dollar Days, like, smoothly transitions into I They're Can't Get Everything song. Away. And I'm like, oh, why... I, I, there was a throw on Indie Heads the other day that was like, what are some, like, good slash great albums that suffer from bad sequencing? And I think debatably, debatably, this album could be one of them. Because it's it it's sort of random how it goes from like oh these tracks say you know, but how like would the, you resequence it. Though? It's not that I would resequence. I'm just saying that like it's like it's weird that this. I, I, that, I, that I this do is not this, disagree with that decision. The oh, sound has like it's not this album is not a bad sequence. It's just like it's not perfect. Like because it's so weird that 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 Dollar Days it's the only track that like perfectly transitions into the next track, but well, all the other is, ones they don't. Why like, can't you just do that once? What? Yeah, most albums don't have good transitions between songs. I'm just like, saying, it's just like, okay, I'm just saying, like, why is this the only song that has that transition, but everything else is more just like. I mean, where the fuck kind of... Monday? These are answers we don't have, questions we don't have the answers to. Yeah. yeah. yeah it, just, it, just, it just seems like an odd decision. It's like, oh, I mean, I think it works, but it's like, why did you do it for this track and not the other tracks? I don't know. But yeah, Dollar Day is a great track. Um, and then I can't have everything. It's just you know this. Uh, I think I think it's also Alex, very. It's very. It's, there's a lot I, of different ways you can translate it, but either way, it's it's pretty obvious what it's about. Mm-hmm. I you don't know exactly what he means yeah. by it. I haven't like. I don't know. Given too much thought into this, but I, I think there are reasons why Dollar Days transitions into I can't give everything away. Like I think that song is building up to the last song. Um. 
And I have a couple thematic ideas, but I haven't properly analyzed the lyrics at all yet, so mm -hmm. I don't want to, like, state them here, but... Well, things, it's just, it's kind of like the Beatles with, their, um, with the medley. Yeah. And Abbey Road. I mean, this is kind of like a lesser version of that, kind of, or just kind of, it's kind of a finale, like, the song just kind of leads into it, you know? It's kind of an yeah. epic ending. I mean, again, and, and, and just from the chorus, if I can't get everything away, it's very obvious, like, this is his swan song. Like, this is like... I his last will and testament. Yeah, it's like, I can't. I want to give you guys more music because, like, mentally, it just seemed like David Bowie, he had a lot more left in the tank. It still seemed like he had a lot of musical ideas. And, like, again, he was working on a new album. Like, he was putting demos together for the new for a new album. Yeah. And he passed away. It just, it just seemed like... I mean, that's one of the things that, after listening to this album for the first time, you know, it was, like, kind of well, wondering, like, what the hell is he going to do? What, what is he going to do next? Like, it seems like... Are, could we get another Bowie resurgence, like where he's gonna do some weird experimental stuff, like yeah, similar to like maybe Scott Walker? I think the timeline here was Bowie gets cancer, he's going through that whole experience. He writes songs, gets the band together, they start recording demos. Then he goes into remission. They finish the album, and he's like, "Well, now that I'm okay, maybe I'll write some new shit." And then he. You know, Just the kidding. cancer, the cancer came back. Because, because again, accordingly to the sound, apparently to but like that's his, what like I heard it, from Tony Visconti at least, I think, or I, I think I might be messing that timeline. Maybe. Up, but I think more, he said, according to his biographer, less. like in the making of this album, he he suffered from like six heart attacks, like while making this album. I heard that. I heard that's a. I heard that's a myth. Yeah, yeah. I, I haven't. That, that's. I heard that's, that's not. That's unconfirmed. <laughs> you can't survive six heart attacks over like. See, see Matt, you're just dropping drop all kind of inconsistencies to you. <laughs> I hate you guys. Facts. I really hate it's a you fact guys. Cast. <laughs> see, I, I'm, I'm the host and I'm always cast. right, and you guys are, you know, that you guys are breaking that, you know, that narrative away because I want all of our viewers to know that I'm always right about everything, and see, you guys are ruining that. Too, but we know, pitchfork. We know that pitchfork is bullshit. We're I am the pitchfork the of music podcasting. Okay. You guys better pip, 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 piss off. Wait, what was that? What was that? Never mind. I'm not telling you. I'm not telling you. I'm trying to remember. I'm trying to remember what. Um, you should never fuck with a female journalist. Like after that Sun Kill Moon thing, the piece that uh the or stamps that she wrote. And it was like, this is a good. Like she wrote a really good piece about that. But it was like, oh, why are you gonna present it like that? I don't know. Okay, We're getting really off topic paper? right now. Like, like, why is it a female journalist you shouldn't mess with? You, like, you shouldn't fuck with. Them. Like, she typed it, like, a really, like, weird way. I was like, okay, you know what? I'm with you. I'm on your side. Okay, I like Sun Moon. I think it makes great music. But it's like, I'm with you. You shouldn't said so. You shouldn't have said anything. But it's like, we're getting way fucking off topic. Let's get back to the no, fucking t album. Protect Mark Kozilek at all costs. Protect Mark Kozilek. Yeah. We'll probably be talking about his album, like, soon. I mean, I was, he has I was, an album? Yeah, he's doing. Yeah, he, yeah, he doesn't have much. I was going to talk about it today, but I, it's, it's, it's oh, the Oh right, right. The um collaboration with Jesse. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's, I can't wait. It. It's tough. I mean, again, the the first line on I can't give everything away is I know something is very wrong, and it's like, oh shit. Well, even like, before he died, like he knew, like he was kind of it was kind of weird. Like he knew it was kind of eerie. Yeah. yeah. It was definitely like I mean again the sound again you know it definitely seemed like if it was, if this was if he didn't die if this was his last album it'd be like this would be a really good way to go out even though it's like I know like he could do so much more and it's like but if this is the last one I think he did a good job I mean I'm, I'm okay things like I'm okay with no new boy just because I mean he gave it so much this is his 25th album you know like yeah obviously and then like, he and he had, like obviously had the classic run in the 70s I'm excited to hear those demos. Years. Although then it yeah. might just make it hurt more that they never got to be completed. Yeah, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean the po the point is that, I mean like I'm if that's all he had to give, I'm okay with that. You know, like yeah. we, we didn't deserve this album. Mm -hmm. At this point in his life, you know, like getting a classic. Yeah. A, cl a classic quotation marks because it's too soon to say, but it's. I mean, with his death, I feel like this album is definitely gonna go down as like, oh, a absolutely. really important landmark of like. Even 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 when he even when he was dying of Thank cancer, you. he was still making great music. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think for me, that not necessarily like a landmark album, but like I think although it's that's not really artistic. Statement. I just mean like an in rainbow style classic, where like people who are into music and are familiar with that, you know, like 
with the band are like, you know, yeah, and Rainbows is one of their best albums, but that's not the way it's going to be looked at by, like, you know, outsiders. They're just going to, like, think of, you know, OK Computer and shit. Mm -hmm. um, but here it's definitely going to be revered by the music community. Yeah. For, for me, this album, it's, I mean, it's a great album, but, like, he had so many classics in the 70s that you can't really start to compare it, especially not yet. Yeah. But I think it might be his masterpiece artist. Just, I mean, even though it wasn't even intentional, just the way that he released it and the way that he died so soon afterwards and that like it affected us so deeply just because of that you know because yeah. he'd been on our mind because he was so present with us and then you hear the album like right afterwards and then just it, listening to it for the first time that morning this cr completely crushed me just completely mm -hmm. you know just because everything just makes so much sense it's like oh god mm -hmm. so i think and just like where the fuck did monday go the way that it lines up with his actual death yeah. so soon after like it just, I think it's a masterpiece or artistic statement, mm -hmm. artistic like success. Yeah, I mean, again, essentially, Bowie made his death an art project, and you know, the sound was just a part of that art project. And it was the best. It was the best new music, best mm -hmm. new death art project. Jesus fucking Christ, Will. <laughs> we're getting serious towards anything. Like we're getting like real into it, and it's like I got to make a, a shitty joke about Pitchfork. Okay, mm. anyway, but but uh, I'm uh, what, what a terrible podcast this was. I know. Again, anticipate this podcast sucks. That's that's that, that's gonna, that's going to be the name. That's going to be the name of this podcast. Title. Anticipate See, I, this podcast sucks. I feel like we should be safer with the name because we got kind of shit last time making like a sarcastic name. Yeah. Well, the thing is, that was I, got, I wanted to do. There's a star man waiting in the sky just to continue up with the corny quotes, but like I want to do. I want to do like the, the gang is not a. Here's the thing. We get okay. Here's the thing. Okay, the people like it when we shit on ourselves, but they don't like it when we shit on them. Hence, why the white cis men thing didn't go over. And that wasn't my idea. That was Ethan's idea. Even I agree that wasn't a good name for the podcast. But it's like we couldn't think of anything because we we're because I was fucking tired and I was not up for it. Uh, but yeah, let's oh, fuck it. Let's. let's it's okay. gonna be surprised. It's gonna be a good name. Yeah. Well, let's get some final thoughts on the album. Um. I think this is again, even you know, without the concept of his death, this album is fantastic. The production is incredible. Um, you know, Tony Visconti and David Bowie do a great job, and the band does a fantastic job. You know, saxophone's great. Drums are really, you know, really hard hitting and do, do just fit well well over the songs. And just the 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 chemistry of the band is just so like well because this album, it's definitely Bowie's kind of like go. I mean, even in his death, he's still going into like new territory, and it definitely feels like. You know him going to new territory with this like this random jazz quartet, and they just you just it's just like instant chemistry pretty much. They work together so well, and you know, yeah. and, and and for Bowie's aged vocals, this production fits a lot better because it's like it's still kind of weird and eerie and you know experimental. And Bowie's vocals are aged, and it's like he can't be going over some like normal rock music. He's got to be going over some weird shit, and this is some weird shit. Yeah, and my then, only complaint really. Keep going. No, no, no. I'll let you go. Yeah. The only thing is that because it is so weird, like things like it's so eerie, it's hard to fall in love with this album. Does that make sense? Like, Kinda. I think it's all great. But it's like hard to be like. No, I want to listen to this like by like, um, yeah, I want to listen to this just right now. Yeah. Like, it's kind of like Defense of Butterfly for me where it's like everything on it's like yeah. perfect. It's just, heavy. And again, I can't, I, I like can't just Defense be in love Butterfly, with this album. I disagree. <laughs> I, you just yeah. can't. Or, just, you know. can't just throw this album on like at random. It's like, like it's, I got to go for it. It's yeah. not an album that I'm in love with. If that makes sense. I, it's like, I I really like this record. Um, it's it's I a can, good one though. I can see it being my ALTY, but It'll that be would be kind of disappointing because Radiohead and Kanye and maybe Frank Ocean and James Blake and Grizzly Bear and possibly Vampire oh, Weekend God. are all going to drop this year. And <laughs> I was really banking on one of them to drop like a, a really 10 out of 10 record, you know? And, and I don't know. I don't know if this album is a 10 out of 10 for me, but it's, it's, it's at least like a nine. Actually, speaking at of the very least, for speaking me, of ratings, let's get into yeah. our ratings of the album. Um, I'm giving this uh, nine major Tom helmets out of 10. Uh, uh Will, I'm giving it. It's I'm so high it makes my brain whirl. Um. Okay. My rating of this album is the gyrating background dancers in the Black Star video. 
Perfect. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed listening to uh, this week's podcast. Uh, next week, uh, we're not entirely sure. Are we okay? When was the Elvis Presley interview? Because I am not. Ethan's Ethan's that's, set, that's, that's Ethan's project. That's Ethan's project. It'll probably is, be out. Is the Vinyl Me Please podcast just not happening? It's gonna probably happen this week, but Tower hasn't gotten back to me. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, we'll have two, but uh, like at least two more podcasts this week. Uh, Tower from Vinyl Me Please, and um, and uh, Matt from Elvis to Presley. Also, we're gonna be having Alex Young from Consequence of Sound on the podcast uh, this weekend, next weekend, and then Ooh, uh, also, all, oh yeah, I didn't even mention that who we're interviewing. And then uh, Cascading Elephants will be having on uh, the next day after we do the Alex Young interview. Are we just going to be releasing these just as separate interviews, or are no, we just we'll going to make a we'll bunch of do... fucking episodes? We're going to make week? a bunch. Of, we're going to make like four. There's going to be four episodes in the next like week or so. It's going to be crazy. Okay. Uh, but yeah, hope you guys. <laughs> in, we'll, we'll probably like some of them. We'll wait to release them, obviously. But like we, at the very least, you'll have like two more podcasts this week. Uh, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed listening and, uh, uh, you know, bye and, uh, rest in peace, David Bowie. We miss you, man. All right. All right. right. Force him out.